steroids okay obviously you can tell I've taken them (laughs) that wasn't one of the questions by the way (laughs) well they don't be insulted I'm not asking you that (laughs) I saw some of a t-shirt in a gym once and it said um, no I'm not no I'm not on steroids but thanks for asking (laughs) thought it was a cool t-shirt but it clearly was on steroids (laughs) (laughs) Um, okay so what is your first of all we're going to think about uh, sports now Um, and obviously as we know uh, it, it can be pretty rife in, in many yeah. different sports yeah. um, in every country uh, not just the obvious ones <coughs> Russia um, what's your opinion on steroid abuse in sports so obviously different environments sports federations systems have kind of rules so you know if we looked at um, if we looked at anything God you look at cycling it's probably a really popular one um, you know we all know the history of Lance Armstrong and probably what happened at elite cycling you know cycling as a sport said do you know what we don't want people using steroids it doesn't make things fair Um, and then some people started to use it and that becomes unfair it becomes unfair to the people that are really putting in a lot of effort and that's why people get banned because it said well you broke the rules and you know now you're out and to compete at elite sport you're either out you've ruined your chances Mm. or you, we need you to learn your lesson you can come back in a couple of years time so my perspective is is that you need to abide by the rules if you want to compete at the top level and not be pissed off if you get caught um, and, and, and people are unhappy at that because the rules were the rules and you decided to compete knowing those rules mm. if people start to do it for their own reasons um, then that's completely up to them if for example a amateur cyclists started taking steroids and they started winning all the events at the amateur level even though that maybe wasn't quite a strict framework of rules we could then say well that's pretty unfair because all those other guys again are competing at a a natural playing field Um, you know I played rugby uh, last season with a guy at my level you rarely see steroids in in rugby Mm. but you can see it a little bit as you start to progress up and this guy um, had had evidently taken steroids and he was inhumanely stronger than everyone else he was a real threat on the pitch you know elbows everywhere like he's just savagely strong and we were looking at it like this feels a bit unfair like this guy has a massive advantage on the pitch um, so I think when it comes down to individuals doing something for their individual reasons like For example, a classic example is bodybuilding. There's a lot of steroids in bodybuilding. Mm. If you want to do that for a personal gain, you're going to do it safely and healthily, and you just want to maybe build that level of muscle mass, then do it. That's fine. What I don't want people to do is say, oh, yeah, I was all natural. Yeah, I didn't take steroids because that's then lying. So I think it is kind of this cheating aspect that you know we need to be the right kind of role models. So if you take steroids tell people about it because that's the honest thing to do uh, and don't compete in an arena where the rules are not to mm. I think I pretty much agree with everything you said there <laughs> I um, I mean I used to have a real issue with it uh, uh, years ago you know because I used to find that uh, back in the day when you first went down the gym you built up some muscle and then um, you uh, people would join the gym and you'd be the strong guy in the gym because you were the one that had been there the longest and put the hardest work in um, now you find you go to the gym and someone will turn up and three months later they're they've got they're bigger than you and you're yeah. like what the hell <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> been training for years and you, you're bigger than me already uh, and it used to be a real bee in my bonnet um, but now I'm like everyone has their reasons I guess don't they everyone's got their motivations and we don't know why mm-hmm. and what's influencing that and so I try not to be too judgmental about it um, but do you think will ever be able to eliminate in sport or do you think it's, it's just going to be there no because the desire to get the edge and the desire to win um, is a is a real thing when it comes to sport you've got to look at you know from a character trait perspective why do people choose to push their body to an extreme that they can get on the podium and say I am the best at mm. this so there's a deep down driver that that person has and that will cloud their decision making process in the pursuit of achieving that thing um, and that's when people make poor decisions you know you think about someone take cycling again as an example someone trains and trains and does everything and then they have like a failure it's really hard to swallow 
and then in that moment someone says well you could take this uh, I know a guy who took this and he went up the rankings by 20 places in the space of three weeks in that place when you're feeling that low and that angry that's when you make bad decisions mm. so I think it'll always be there I think unless really strict rules start to come in a lot of broad testing um, it, it won't change have you seen oh what's it called it's on Netflix The it starts off as a documentary about a guy in cycling yes yeah, yeah I've seen uh, it, it, it uh, something Iricus Iricus yeah, yeah, yeah it is Iricus yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've seen yeah. it yeah I have yeah yeah that's that was interesting wasn't it like you're watching it and suddenly it turns it's all about this guy isn't it yeah. the, it's about the professor isn't it rather than the the guy doing the cycling yeah um, but yeah that was an interesting but it look. shows you how corrupt it is when yeah. things are at stake things get corrupt very quickly um, I mean that's the great thing about people that do those documentaries it's it, they, they, they're they brave enough to put themselves out there and, and lift the lid on that sort of stuff um, but you wonder that's, that that emphasis was on, was on Russia um, but you wonder what you know, if, if the same emphasis was put on other countries mm. would we get just as an exciting great documentary on every country you know mm. <laughs> you just don't know dear mm. so um, it seems a bit, a bit unfair sometimes it'd be focused on one um, in the what about um, well, we talked about sport but what about in the actual fitness uh, industry um, so particularly those that maybe have a big public following you know they could have a massive social media following um Especially if you've got younger males that are following them and they see these big guys and mm. they, they think, I want to look like that. Um, I suppose really you've answered it because you said you think should, people should be honest about it. Yeah. If people... I know, I know people that have taken steroids and it's been a contributing factor to their success on social media because it's obviously, to a lot of people, inspirational. People go... Well, I want that level of muscle mass. And people have gone, oh yeah, buy my training plan. That's what got me really mm. muscular. Don't get me wrong, the guy trained hard or the girl trained hard. They put in the work, but they were heavily assisted. It's the honesty thing. And there is so few professionals that you could count, probably in one hand, that have been honest about their steroid use. But the thing is, is people love them for it even more. It's yeah. like, okay, I respect that. You're now a role model for people that want to do that in the right way and healthily. And the problem is, is if if we're genuinely concerned with people's health, we will tell them that. Because mm. the problem is they're going to go about that. And if they think one day, like if you said to me, oh, you know that guy, he actually took steroids. Oh, really? And then I have to make a decision of whether I want to take steroids or not. Now, if I want to take steroids, I'm now going to go and ask my mate that knows someone down the gym and now I'm probably not going to get the right kind of stuff or the mm. right support whereas if more people are honest about it online that person if they did want to take steroids can then go well I do and it's a decision that I've made for personal reasons I know I need to take this and this but I also need to take this and this and this to support it to do it healthily mm. um, I've done a two or three part podcast on my show with a guy called uh, Dave Crossland and he's a steroid expert and he openly says like I'm I'm not pro or against steroids again it's a personal use thing but God if you're going to do it know how to do it mm. because no one's doing it properly and that's how I, everyone is getting testosterone problems later on in life you know they're getting all these side effects because they're not doing it so if we had more people talking about it whether people are going to do it or not they're going to do it safely Mm. and that's important yeah, that's you know I'm advice. not judging anyone that does it but I'm judging you if you're giving out the wrong information or lying about what you're doing yeah and that's the thing that's, I suppose that was my issue and, and still is to a degree is that in some way or another it's encouraging body dysmorphia in, in younger males well and older males actually mm. I'm still looking at my guns every day in the mirror and be like damn it <laughs> <laughs> I might even get that guy's number you were talking about <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah so that, that that was my kind of being a bonnet there Um have you ever been tempted yourself? Not really. Um, I've said to myself that I would be open to the idea in the future when I don't like compete in sport and it wouldn't be unfair. I would literally just do it for myself. Like if I took it now, it would give me an unfair advantage in like my sport, for example, in mm. rugby. Like I'd 
maybe run faster or be stronger or whatever yeah. um, the only reason I would do it is purely to find out what effect it had on the body because in where I've come from in my journey in my position I'm a bit of a human guinea pig so I like to try different training programs and you know protocols so it would be purely out of an interesting I wouldn't want to you know a lot of people have done it really for personal gain and financial gain because mm. it's it's been aspirational I wouldn't do it for any of those reasons and if I did it I'd document all of it on social media yeah yeah absolutely. I would say this is what I'm doing this is why I'm doing it this is how I'm doing it this is where I'm starting from this is how I've ended up like and document the whole mm. thing because I've got nothing to gain from hiding it but I've got everything to gain from sharing it yeah totally I, I've 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 considered not seriously considered but I've considered that myself and doing that just because exactly the same dead dead curious uh, and I know that um, when I've spoken to other people about stories in the past they've always said you know the thing that annoys me is you know you still have to work hard it's not like I just take steroids and um, which yeah of course but aren't we all working hard aren't we all going in that gym and working our asses off we are um, and I think it must be a hell of a lot easier to stay motivated when you're going back in each day and you can get another play on the bar. Um, you can work that a little bit harder. You can get that extra rep every time you go back. Um, and also, I saw, it's the first time I've ever seen this, I saw a study the other day that said that they had um, different groups of people. They had a placebo group mm-hmm. um, who uh, trained and were given a placebo. They had a, a group that were trained and were given roids. They had a group that trained and were given nothing. And they had a group that didn't train at all. <laughs> and the last group were given the gear and didn't even train. Mm-hmm. Well, as you expected, the guys that had nothing and didn't train, their, when they did muscle biopsies after a period of something like six weeks, no change at all. The guys that trained uh, with the placebo, there was a bit of gain. The guys that trained with the gear, there was a lot of gain. Um, but the, the thing, that was all kind of obvious findings, really. The bit that I was really shocked about was the group that didn't train and took the gear gained muscle mass. Not significant amounts, but they still gained muscle mass. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you hear the argument that, you know, well, I still have to train hard. Um, yeah, I'm sure they do. Mm-hmm. But why would you risk your getting caught? Why would you risk your reputation if it's not really doing a great deal, if it's not really giving you that much of an edge. Mm-hmm. It must be giving a big edge, mustn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's get off stories. I mean, <laughs> the conversation. 